When you have followed this course from the beginning, you have saved a lot of time. Because mostly it takes three to five years before you're at a level of general relativity. But because we have chosen a different path, a path of Isaac Newton, we have a much more powerful equation. And now the next step to general relativity is only a small step. It is only the addition of an extra term and then we can describe completely the interaction between gravity and light. But we have to understand first that in classical mechanics mass and inertia are identical understandings. But for light it is different. The inertia term for light means the force you need to change the direction or the magnitude of the velocity of the phenomenon. And the mass is the amount of confined energy, confined electromagnetic radiation. But for light, these are different terms. We will see that the light has been a phenomenon with different properties for mass and inertia. And the second problem we face is that we have to remember that mathematics is, is quicksand. So when we look at one equation, it is very well possible that this equation represents more equations with very different meanings and applications. And that also happens for the phenomenon of light. The propagation of light has been expressed by an equation, but in fact this equation represents two totally different phenomena. We have seen that from Newton's second law of motion we can derive the field equation for electromagnetic fields and this equation represents the interaction force density expressed in Newton per cubic meter between the electric, magnetic and the inertia force densities. Mathematics is like quicksand because when we look at this equation it looks like a single equation but that is not correct. In fact this represents two different equations with a completely fundamentally different meaning. When we write them in different colors we can see that both equations written in an identical way represent two fundamentally different processes. The top equation represents an electromagnetic field interacting with itself. For example, this is a beam of light, like a laser beam, propagating through space in a perfect equilibrium with itself and its surrounding, where all the total inertia forces, electromagnetic interaction forces together equal zero. The equation below is a very different equation. In this situation we have two different fields indicated as an E and B and the E represents one field and the B represents in blue the different field. For example an electron passing a magnetic field, then we can call the electric field of the electron the red field A and the blue field B of the magnetic field, they both are interacting. And also during the interaction process of two completely different fields, the total force densities together always have to equal zero according Newton's third law. And this is in fact what's happening when a beam of light enters a gravitational field. Because then suddenly we have two situations. In the top equation this represents the beam of light, but an extra interaction term has to be added to interpret the interaction 
of the electromagnetic field itself with the gravitational field because an electromagnetic beam of light represents an energy density and an energy density when it is confined always represents a gravitational field and what happens now is that when an electromagnetic wave enters a gravitational field the gravitational field around the beam of light is interacting with the gravitational field which is passing by for example a black hole Thank you.